Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 322, Hormonal Treatment for Transgender People. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This morning we want to talk about hormonal treatments for people that, that are necessary and required for people that are going through the process of becoming transgendered. Mm-hmm. And we have with us this morning Dr. Rachel Sullivan, okay. who is developing a specialty in that area. And it's, it's an area that doesn't have a lot of providers that know what they need to know or are willing to provide the, the services, in part because before they reach the stage of hormonal changes that need to occur, they have to go through a lot of counseling, they have to go through a lot of evaluations, they have to make a lot of emotional determinations. Their, their presentation typically is, I am trapped in the wrong body form, I was born emotionally a girl or a boy, physiologically I'm not, that's mm-hmm. messed me up in enormous ways and I want to change. And in order to change, there have to be a lot of hormonal changes, and then there eventually have to be surgical changes if they're going to become fully transgendered. So the treatment of that, the knowledge about that, and the work with that requires a great deal of expertise. And Dr. Sullivan, you are developing that expertise, and you're starting to have a focus in your practice in Kansas City for treating these individuals. How did you get interested in this? Uh, I noticed that with hormone replacement, a lot of people say, oh, it's for it's just for people in menopause, it's just for men with low testosterone. And I, I kept thinking to myself, you know, there's this huge population where they, they're missing certain hormones because they are born female, but they want to be male, or they're born male and they want to be female. To me, that's the largest hormone imbalance that you could ever see if, mm-hmm. they're, if their hormones are the complete opposite sex of what they are. Um, and I've noticed that there's just a huge need for it uh, in Kansas City and in St. Louis, uh, that there's a huge, a huge need. And a lot of people are just kind of overlooking it uh, as kind of a thing in society that people don't really talk about and people don't really want to um, assess or help with, especially in the medical community. It's hard to find um, physicians who will, uh, will, help, will help with this. But as a physician, uh, if I just wander into your office and say, you know, I've struggled with this all my life. I, I've now discovered that the issue I'm struggling with is that I want to be female mm-hmm. or I need to be female. I am female, but physically I'm not. Can you yes. help me? Uh, you don't just take somebody that walks in off the street with no. that curiosity. No. That there's a procedure that they have to go through yes. before you deal with them medically. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about what's involved? So we usually so with our procedures for that, we usually have they usually have a primary care doctor or someone that they've been working with before who has documented the changes or the complaints that they've had for a while and we'd like to review those. But there's a huge psychological evaluation that goes with this before hormone replacement can begin. Um, It's very important that all of the issues um, are discussed with uh, a psychiatrist or psychologist uh, that, um, sorry. So they don't make a mistake. So they don't make a mistake. Exactly. And and you know, not necessarily the individual that wants to be transgendered, but their, their, their families, their friends, their support people often their initial response is, well, you're just homosexual. Yes. You're just gay. Yes. And so that's what's going on here. Yeah. And those people have a real sense, no, that's not right. I'm mm-hmm. not gay. Yes. I really am female or I really mm-hmm. am male and my body has betrayed me. Right. And it's very important that the psychological evaluation goes to those deep parts of their past and their history to make sure that what they're thinking, that they are transgender, is what they want to be long term. That's what the the final decision that they want to make and that they weren't just, you know, they weren't dealing with something else so that when, um, if we do hormone replacement, we start to do that, they are in therapy, they unlock something else and they say, you know what, that's all it was. I needed to figure this out 
first, and it's very so it's very important that the decision that they make has been discussed thoroughly, has been um, they really have to weighed. be prepared to the point where it's appropriate to start hormone right. changing. Yes, exactly. So, so that's done. Yes, and I, I come to you. I've had the psychological evaluations. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in agreement that this is an appropriate step for me to yes. do for my sense of self. Yes. I present myself to you. What are the first things that we talk about? What what happens next? Uh, the first things we talk about are the changes that you would have with hormone replacement. Uh, for transgender, we still use pellets because it's still uh, the best form of... To deliver. Yes, yeah. to deliver hormones. Uh, but we discuss the changes that will come with the hormones that we are giving. Uh, For instance, use me as an example. I would lose, my voice would change. If you were becoming a woman? Yes. uh, Your voice may change, may not. Um, Sometimes it gets, it can get higher, but the biggest part is the estrogen that we're giving you. Right. Uh, The estrogen we're giving you, you'll grow breasts, you'll become a little more shapely, have a little more. Less angular, more rounded. Yes. Okay. Um, My face as well. Uh, yes, you can get more fat in your face, mm-hmm. like especially around your cheeks. Just from the estrogen? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And is the estrogen the primary hormonal change that, that I experience? Do you decrease testosterone? Is there a way to... You suppress it by just giving yes. the estrogen. Yes. Okay. And uh, but sometimes people it depends on what life what part of their life they're in as well. Um, so sometimes if they are older and they actually have low testosterone as well, mm-hmm. you replace it like you would for a female range. Because women need testosterone mm-hmm. as well. Yes. So the, the the knowledge that you need to have includes the balancing of those things yes. as somebody is trying to change. Absolutely. Wow. Um, what if I get a third of the way through or halfway through and I say, you know what, I made a terrible mistake. I just can't do this. Yes. Uh, my my wife and my children are not going to love me anymore. Even if I think it's the right thing to do, I got to back out. Mm-hmm. Uh, are are those changes reversible? Absolutely. You, as a patient, you have the decision to stop whenever you want, um, or and to not continue with the transition. That's a hundred percent up to the person making, uh, getting the pellets and getting the hormones. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, sometimes when you stop. Now, with pellets um, and hormone replacement in that direction, the pellets don't just stop. You can't just get the pellets and say, I don't want to do this anymore. Now, we have ways of dissolving it more quickly so that it can get out of your system more quickly, but it's not going to be you wake up and we have, we have Today, to remove the yes. pellets from you. Um, that sometimes ta- that takes a few months, uh, sometimes so you don't stop six on a dime. to eight yeah. months for it to fully be out of your system. And sometimes... Um, the, the changes you've made, uh, like growing breast tissue, some of that extra fat, uh, sometimes that just the takes skin a, stretching yeah, the skin out. stretching. Uh, sometimes that takes um, a while, if ever, for that to go away. You might have to have surgery, away. like those people that, that lose enormous yes. amounts of weight and have yes. skin that hangs. Yes. Um, while I'm going through the hormonal changes yes. uh, and up to the point of having a mm-hmm. surgical change, mm-hmm. as my... Hormone doctor. Yes. You still work in tandem with other physicians who are monitoring my care? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you just focus on the hormone stuff. Yes. Um, for, for this part, for transgender, we focus only on the hormone part, and we work very closely with their primary care doctor or their endocrinologist if they have one as well, um, and, as well as the psychiatrist. What about a surgeon? Surgeon if you, if as well. you reach that point. When yes. You, when it's time for that, there's a yes. there's a team process and Absolutely. decision making. There's always a team process. We never make one decision by ourselves. Okay. And you can't go back after the surgery. I mean, I guess you could, but I mean, it would be more surgery. Well, right after the. I mean, the s- surgery is the end point. The if sur- you have the surgery, then. That's right. It. But you can still stop getting hormones. It's right. just that the parts that they've made either into a vagina or into a penis are pretty hard to reverse. reverse. Right. But you could, aside from sexual performance, you could restructure yourself yes. masculine or feminine mm-hmm. at some point if you decide. Because one of the things that I worry about with this as a counselor is, to my knowledge, a number of people who have gone through the whole transgender process have have still suffered with extreme depression and mm-hmm. suicidality, and, and any number of them commit suicide because yes. they find it's not the solution they hoped it would be. Right. And so that's why it's important to keep these other paraprofessionals 
involved. Absolutely, especially for this, it's a team effort. Um, there's there's really no point when we leave all the other people behind and say thanks, but we don't need mm -hmm. your help, um, especially psychiatric wise. Um, but with surgical and um, primary care provider as well, because sometimes the patient will say something to them that they haven't said to us. It's just, uh, you know, normal, it's human nature to sometimes sure. leave things out or ha let something slip to somebody that could be a red flag um, or could be the exact opposite, very supportive and very, well, you know, very happy. And that's becoming more of a desired focus for medicine anyway. Even mm -hmm. You specialize in, in weight management and the yes. other side of your practice. Yes. And what all the studies are showing is that there needs to be a, a team approach, a, a connective process, a discussive process beyond just weight and diet advice. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a similar kind of thing. Yes, it's it's the exact same thing. And you're that. developing then a network of other physicians and other specialties then that know that you do this or yes. that you're... We're starting getting... to do that now um, as we speak. We're working on that um, on the Kansas City side. Um, hopefully one day we'll be able to take it, uh, you know, to St. Louis as well. But our Primary focus right now is Kansas City. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking thank to us. Thank you so much. It. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.